On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the big September issue. I have a segment on the best knives for filleting and cutting bait, and our correspondents check in with the latest fishing information, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, September 1st, and the monthly September Glossy Magazine is out now. Those speedsters will be arriving any day now, and Connor McElode has a great read on how to target these little tuna. Captain Jim Frieda has a great article on the wonders of the Salmon River in upstate New York as well. Brendan Saucil talks about tournament surf casting, and I have an article on how to fish some of the toughest conditions in Montauk. All this and more in the September Glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Remember, $29.95 got you 12 glossy print issues and all the weekly digital content and full access to the website, too. And best of all, you can compete in the Coastal Kayak Class and Dreamboat Contest. It's crazy how fast this summer has gone, but the good news is as the autumn approaches and the temperatures lower with the sun, the full run will begin. Capital Fishing Tackle has been located in New York City since 1897, but its roots go back to 1895 in Germany, sharpening surgical tools. Now the store has a new location right here in Freeport, which we are reporting from for this forecast. The shop is known for a wide selection of salt and freshwater tackle, along with knowledgeable staff who can help with all fishing related questions. Hey guys, I'm Eric from Capital Fishing Tackle. Welcome to our new store in Freeport. We specialize here in anything from inshore fishing to anywhere to offshore fishing. We stock all sorts of slow pitch jigs, all different types of rods and reels. We have a huge inventory. We have a super dialed in staff and we have a super dialed in inventory for all the local fishing that you can do here and up and down the East Coast. We specialize in inshore and offshore rigging. If you need new wind-ons put on, that's what we do. We can do great hollow core splicing for you as well. We're open seven days a week. We're open wee hours in the morning too for anybody that wants to get out early. And we look forward to seeing you guys soon. We are the Fish Bites Nation. And this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. The weekly video fishing forecast is now available as a podcast search for the Fisherman Magazine on iTunes and Google Podcasts. And subscribe to get all the great audio content. In other news, we are excited to bring back the big show at the Long Island Hilton. This year will be better than ever as now the show will cover surf, inshore, and offshore. So mark your calendar for September 22nd. And as always, the first 500 through the door will get a goodie bag worth more than the price of admission alone. There are many choices of knives when it comes to cutting bait and filleting your catch. I stopped in at Trophy Tackle in West Babylon to show you some of the options. Uh, let's talk about some Dexter knives today. And um, we feature Dexter knives at the shop. They've been around since 1918. Most of the knives are American made. All of the ones I'm showing you today are American made. Um, we just really like their products. Uh, let's start off with their newest product. And this is their new Dexter Dextreme. And it's a, it's a dual purpose knife in that it could be used as a fillet or a skin knife on the normal traditional blade end. But up here they have their tiger scalloped edge. And what's really great about this is that when you're working a bigger fish, a tuna fish, or possibly maybe even a blackfish and want to dress it, wh whack the tails off, whack the heads off, you flip the knife over, this saws through all the bone and the cartilage really easy. Uh, they've been selling very, very well. Uh, really good reviews from all the customers we sold them to. So um, we really appreciate that Dexter is always looking forward. And this is a, this is a great knife. So uh, keep an eye on these. The, um, the next knife we want to talk about is um, some of the Dexter fillet knives. And so uh, I have two of my favorite knives right here for uh, working um, on the fillet table. And the first one is a really small knife. It's a Dexter 1376N uh, with a rosewood handle and a carbon steel blade. Um, these are great knives because they keep an edge since they're carbon steel. And so when you're cutting through small panfish like porgies, uh, those little bones kind of nick the blades up and the blades get worn down really fast and don't hold an edge. Um, so this is a great knife. It's small. It's easy to work with around a smaller panfish. And then the 1378 Dexter is the knife of choice for most of the people who work like in Captree 
on the party boats. All the mates use this to dress all their fluke and other fillet uh, processing needs. Again, rosewood handle, uh, high carbon steel uh, blade. The blade is going to get a patina finish from years of use. It's not going to stay nice and shiny like this. It's going to get dull and funky looking, um, but that's okay. It's supposed to do that. This knife, when you purchase it, because it is rosewood and it has the carbon steel, what we, uh, should, what we should do to the knife is put it in a bowl of white vinegar and then take it out of the bowl of white vinegar, let it air dry, and then use the knife. When you get done with the knife, put some cooking oil. Um, you could spray Pam on it. Some people put olive oil on it, and you'll have this knife for a very long time. Don't put this knife if you buy. I have this knife in my home, at my kitchen, and I never put it in a dishwasher. I wash it by hand. Um, the next knife is for cutting bigger baits, like if you're cutting uh, bunker, butterfish flats, sardines, herring flats. And this is the go-to Dexter scallop knife. Uh, this one happens to be the 8-inch soft grip. It's got a super nice soft grip handle so it doesn't slip out of your hands when you have all the fish slime and the, and the juices on your hands. Um, this scalloped edge is the sharpest edge I know. Uh, this knife has probably put more people in the hospital than any other knife that I've ever used. Um, it's just a great knife for just cutting things, not precision, and just whacking it out. Um, another knife that's not made for that purpose is the Dexter bread knife and the bread knife cuts bait really really well and it's got a little more finesse than the other knife because the scallop blade obviously is meant for cutting bread um, and it's nice too because it has an offset so it kind of gets your hand away from the work a little more and this is just a beautiful knife this is their Velo series it's carbon steel and stainless steel mix so it holds an edge really well and it doesn't get rusty at all great knife um, and we like them a lot also in the kitchen great for whacking up rolls and Italian bread and things like that so a dual use knife I don't know if it would go over very well after you cut some bunker flats and then go and uh, bring it to the kitchen, whatever. Um, how to keep these knives kind of sharp without going through a major process. The fastest way is the Dexter edge knife sharpener. And this is um, just got a little, it's got steel blades in it. And you just take the knife and to dress the edge, you just pull the knife back through and you'll dress and put a really fast edge on the blade. Um, Continued use of this particular product, however, will eventually give the blade a duller finish than normal. So this is good only to use periodically if you got to whack something up really quick and you want to get a quick edge on the, on, the, uh, on the knife. This is a great tool for that. For longer term use and for the better health of the knife, the Dexter steel is appreciated. And we've all seen these in butcher shops. The butcher has to get a quick edge and he just uses the two sides. And you know he takes the knife and goes on both sides and puts a quick edge on it. And so this is a diamond sharpening steel, again, made by Dexter. Obviously, it's more pricey than this tool, but this is a long-term investment. Um, you buy it once, you have it for the rest of your life. So again, Dexter knives made in the USA, uh, great products, and we re recommend them highly. Now let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing about the fishing in the area. To the west, a super hot bluefin bite is developing in the Rockaways. So far, fish up to 167 pounds actually have been landed. Fluke action at the reefs was very good also. Plenty of shorts and enough keepers to make anglers happy. The reefs are also holding a good amount of scup and bluefish too. In the bay, fluking is holding up as well in the western bays, but the keepers, you have to head to the reef for them. Along the central south shore, anglers have found a good amount of fluke, sea bass, and porgies, and bluefish throughout the week. And some weak fish are popping up in the Great South Bay as well. Blowfish and weak fish are making an appearance in the Great South Bay in large numbers to boot. While back out at Mauritius, anglers have found a pick of blowfish in the bay also. But the porgies are in the keeper size quest around Yilwit too. Shinnecock Island is seeing some similar porgy action near the jetty. In Montauk, fluke up to 11 pounds hit the deck, but overall the bite in the last week with the flatties has tailed off a bit. Bottom fishing for porgies and sea bass on the rocky bottom between the point and Block Island was solid again. Offshore, I did hear of some good catches on yellow and bluefin tuna, and the fish are moving back and forth between 15 and the 60 mile range, which makes them a little tough to pinpoint. On the north shore, the excellent blue fishing continued from the city out to the east by Orient Point. Once you find the fish, you can stay on them pretty much most of the day. Fluking was also pretty solid along the north shore of the island, but many of the fish continue to be shorts. I got out in Mauritius fluking as well, and while the bite was not hot, I was able to catch this interesting double-sided fluke. Who's caught something like this before? Leave a comment in the section below. If you miss it, the WICC $25,000 Bluefish Tournament's results are in. John Markopoulos had the winning Gator waiting at Jack's Bait and Tackle on City Island, and it tipped the scales at 16.32 pounds. These results will be made final in a few weeks. 
News 12 meteorologist Rich switch my own has been hitting the fluke pretty good to the west and he's also got the holiday weekend report for us rich hey thanks matt let's check that weekend forecast you know we should check favorite apps weather sites uh, weather tools whatever you got this is a general heads up general uh, overview on the upcoming holiday weekend too so let's check the water temps a lot of 70s still out there very warm water even some spots in the sound close to 80 wave height saturday looks pretty good I don't see a lot of issues here. Unlike last weekend, we had the new moon. We had that uh, leftover roll coming in. So I think not as sloppy in the ocean should be better. A general two to four. The winds will be generally from the south, southeast, or maybe southwest going into uh, Sunday. Weekend looks okay. Holiday weekend should be great. You know, a little different by the time we get to Monday, but I think for the balance of Saturday and Sunday, should be overall decent. A little shower action may get in here later Sunday. Saturday high tides, north shore for the early morning, south shore for about midday. And temps, not bad, you know, 70s to near 80. I think we're looking pretty good there. Let's check out our guru and see what this says. Different look here. There's Saturday, you know, pretty consistent with a light uh, south-southeast breeze. Fairly variable, not too bad. Low wave heights. There's Sunday and a little more of a southwest breeze, maybe, uh, you know, chopping up towards the mid to late afternoon. So I think overall, you know, to start out the holiday weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday looks good. Monday may be a different story, but no matter what you do, be safe as always. Catch them up. Matt, back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, right Hey, everyone. Uh, starting to have some uh, interesting stuff going on out here. Gigantic bunker pods in the ocean. I was down at Tiana Beach, about a half mile out. Um, it had to be a quarter mile long. And uh, the streaks, I got to think it was sharks. I know buddies of mine were fishing close to Mariches. They ran into similar size pods, had sharks, had some bluefish. Um, uh, I was out of Montauk yesterday on the Lazy Bones with my son on the afternoon trip. And while we didn't get into any fluke, decent amount of sea bass and a lot of mackerel. So, um, you know, starting to see that full run kind of foundation come together, hopefully. Um, you know, offshore, the, you know, still a bit of a yellowfin tuna bite, you know, all the way out in the canyon. It's been a definitely a, a very good season where there's been some spectacular catches of some Allison yellowfin. Um you know, the inshore, the fluke bite is still there. It's a, it's a grind. Hampton Lady and the party boats have been getting on them out of Shinnecock, uh, as, long, as well as some private boats working, you know, the different reefs and some deeper water, like I keep saying, 70, 80 feet of water. So, you know, they are there in the bay. It's been, you know, kind of hit or miss. Get have to get through a ton of shorts and sea robins for a keeper, but there is some action. Also, some cocktail blues and striped bass back in those marshy areas. So, uh, some forms of life with, you know, that time of year, the moons and the water cooling down just a smidge from a couple of cooler nights. So, definitely exciting time to, uh, you know, really start to get amped up for what we have coming in the next few months. So, get out there this weekend and fish them up and catch them up. All right, thanks. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey, it's towards the end of August. There's so much to do right now. We've got jiggins happening either at sunset or um, at sunrise. It's a perfect time to get out of the heat. There's tons of porkies out there. Haven't heard much about sea bass. Still fluke in the mix. I've seen a lot come up. We've been going out there. I can't figure out whether we want to go on the boat. We want to go off the beach. You want to fish off the dock. There's a lot of options. A lot of chances to get out, whether you're targeting snappers, uh, porkies off the dock, big eels blue claw crabs there's so much going up in our area i'll tell you all the way from uh Compset right down to stony brook there's a lot of action watch your tides we're coming off the new moon you know that means that uh, you're gonna have some beautiful high tides some of these back areas in the creeks are gonna be flooding out they're packed and when i say packed i mean unbelievable amounts everywhere from one inch right up to six inch size uh bunker and different pods along with adults of uh, tinker mackerel Lots of killies. I mean, the killies are gigantic right now, and the fish are totally targeted on it. I would look at outgoing tide is the best if you have all the options. If not, just get out there and fish and have a great time. Until next week, I bid you all peace. Tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Matt. Fire Island report this week. Uh, fishing is good. I had excellent fish this week. I had fluke to seven pounds limit of weak fish every day uh an interesting note somebody hooked up today a cobia inside fluke fishing 20 pounds had it to the boat got it in the net it jumped out of the net and broke the line or whatever and they lost it so cobia <laughs> by the bridge <laughs> uh so fluke fishing is is pretty good i'm not saying it's great but there are some big fish around 
uh, a lot of shorts. Uh, weak fishing is excellent. And offshore, the offshore scene is really happening now in the canyon, the Bacardi area. And of course, Kobe to the west on the bunker pods, mainly from like Tobe going west from there. It seems to be the most uh, concentration of those fish. So uh, it's excellent. The weather for the weekend is beautiful and you can go anywhere you want this weekend and uh, make sure you get out there and have a lot of fun. And if you want the longer version or my report, log on to skimmeroutdoors.com and you can see the full version, the detail report from Captain Al. That's it for this week, Matt. Talk to you next. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, we're coming to the end of the summer. We have one of our last uh, camping trips my wife and I are taking, and we're doing it right here on Long Island. But you know, at one of the nicest little parks on Long Island, it takes you. Why do we come here? Well, my wife likes fishing for trout. She likes fishing for smallmouth. She likes fishing for panfish, but she loves, loves snapper fishing. When it comes snapper season, it's all about the snappers. She breaks out her little snapper pole with her little snapper poppers, and she will fish for hours. And of course, she outfished me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. We had a really good time. We we're out here in, in Hexley Park, uh, fishing from shore. We had snappers, but we also had quite a few uh, needlefish. I've never seen so many needlefish in one area. Uh, a lot of bait in the water. Uh, the snappers, I caught a really, two really small ones. She caught two really nice ones. Um, and a bunch of other little ones too. I mean, it is, it's snapper fishing. It's just the start. Get your kids out. It's a great way to get them into fishing. Now, fresh water. The Connect Quad is low, but fishing well. Um, talking to, uh, there was a gentleman that came up from Maryland. He was here for his, uh, his sons in hockey tournaments. And he said, I, I gotta go fishing. So I sent him over to the Connect Quad and, uh, he called up, he says, I had four hours and it was great fishing. I had 15 fish, some very large ones. Also, a father and son also were fishing at the same time that uh, on that Saturday. And they, they said they had excellent fishing. When you go there, it's low. But ants seem to be the, one of the best flies right now, floating ants. Um, any terrestrial, beetles will work too. Also stimulators, big stimulators were also working. It is low, so you gotta be a little more stealthy. As far as upstate, forget about the trout. There is no water in the uh, Catskill streams, and it's way too warm. We need water. Uh, hopefully not too much damage has been done with this trout. But if you really do wanna fish for trout upstate, the Delaware is fishing very well. There's enough water in it. It is cold because it's a tailwater, uh, doing well. As far as uh, fishing for um, on the Connecticut, same thing, the Farmington, very low, long leaders. You're talking 14 foot leaders on another three feet of tippet, seven X. Very difficult, very technical. What a great challenge. Um, as far as saltwater goes, well, once again, my wife and I decided to go out and uh, we did all right. We caught some, we didn't catch, it was too windy for bluefish. I mean, we saw some, but just to do, do the cast, it was just tough. So we decided fluke fishing. And we, we had <coughs> a tremendous amount of fluke. <coughs> and there again, we really don't keep any of them. If, they, if one was, maybe we might keep one, but most, so they're all, they're all throwbacks. We non-keepers because we don't keep them. But so, this is the fall. I'm expecting hopefully great things. I hope to get out this week and uh, until next week, tight lines. From Jamaica Bay, Chris Landry is back. Chris. Thanks, Matt. As the cobia bite slows down, boats are now going for bluefin tuna. The bite is not as good as it was last year. It's very difficult and I like watching paint dry. Put out some bunkers and wait. I was out uh, several times this week. On Monday, there must have been 50 or 60 boats out there. I only heard of two boats hooking up. Rockfish Charters, which has been really slaying the bluefin. Uh, DJ Arion, uh, this weekend, Sean Lowe. Also went out with Margarita, Karen Ann Charters. Uh, still hoping to get on one. 
uh, but it has been slow and not as good as last year. And remember, they have to be below 72 inches. Coast Guard is out there. They are popping people, so watch out. Keep it legal. Uh, in other fishing news, there are still striped bass schoolies around uh, Jamaica Bay, as well as a lot of bluefish, a lot of peanut bunker everywhere, a lot of bait. Um, up in the harbor, you can still catch uh, slot size bass, and even uh, there was one 46 pounder caught the other day. So uh, go up to New York Harbor if you want to get on some bass, some bluefin tuna out there beyond Rockaway Reef. Uh, the sharks aren't nearly as bad as they were three or four weeks ago. Uh, so get out there, get tight. Thank you, and back to you, Matt. Let's check it with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. This past week, we've seen a lot of good snapper action in our back bays, our harbors, and shallow around the islands. This is always good family fun. You know, spearing on a snapper hook with a bobber, and then guys using like little cast masters, and then your traditional snapper popper. The striped bass fishing actually had an uptick this past week during the bluefish tournament. We actually saw a lot of nice quality bass taken. Places like 11B and 28 on the chunk at night and in the early morning. I know there's been a lot of peanut bunker and small like butterfish and spearing out there too. And on the outgoing at 11B, we've seen a lot of good topwater bites. So this is a perfect time of year for guys with the fly rod to get on the fish. Locally around the islands, the bass bite is, you know, really good in the morning and then it really tapers off past like 730 with this heat but we should see this progressively getting better moving towards the fall. The fluke fishing still remains slow. People are pounding areas. They're not reporting a good bite. You really got to work hard. So you can try shallow or deep this time of year. You know, trying live snappers is a really good way to try to find a good quality fluke behind like can 26, 24. And then now this time of year along our beaches with all the uh, small bait. Black sea bass still are persistent on our deep water wrecks. So really get on those diamond jigs, butterfly jigs, and then high low with like squid or clams. Porgy fishing still lights out, so it's always good fun. You know, clam chum, a lot of bait. Get on top of shallow water reef, deep water reef, wrecks, you know, rock piles. There's plenty of porgies to be caught. Thanks and good luck. Yes, we'll be checking with Captain Ben Gilmo from Marina Pesvela down in Costa Rica. Hello guys and welcome here to the Marina Pesvela in Costa Rica. Hope you're all doing well. We got some good fishing to report down here. The yellowfin tuna bite has been wide open for this last couple of weeks. We had some really nice yellowfins in the 30 to 50 pound range in the main. My buddies aboard the boat Swordfish caught one about 130 pound just the other day. Some really nice grade yellowfin tuna out there right now. We got some mahi mahi running. Most of them are in the smaller kind of 8 to 15 pound range with a few fish up to 40 pounds as well. There's been blue marlin, sailfish and closest to shore roosterfish, snapper, mackerel and jacks. Fishing's always good down here in Costa Rica, guys. Get those tickets booked and hope to see you down here soon. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. Enjoy the holiday weekend and we will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.